So I'm just going to talk briefly about the five times tables and just some ideas that you might like to use in your classroom. The approach that I'm using is not to teach a new method. I don't have a particular algorithm, a set of steps to say you've got to do it this way, this way, this way. So my recommendation uh, for when you're teaching your students is not to say here's the way I want you to do it, everybody copy me, but rather explore what the numbers mean and help the students to make their own um, connections to construct their own understanding in a very constructivist way. So if we look at the five times table, if we just look at the multiples of five, and if you simply started a lesson with your students and asked them what the multiples were, they quickly tell you there they are. And what we can see straight away, of course, is this lovely pattern, which we don't really get very often in the times tables, where the number of ones is repeated over and over, um, five zero, five zero, five zero, and so on. And I distinctly remember as a child loving that pattern because it was so nice and neat and ordered and structured. But what no one told me as a child was the reason behind it. And of course the reason why it goes 5, 10, 15, 20 and then 25, 30, 35, 40 and so on in that repetitive um, sort of two-part pattern, the reason for that is that 5 is half of 10 and 10 is the basis for our numeration system. So here's a resource which I recommend which you could use of 10 frames. Obviously there are fives here. Well every time we get two fives together we get a group of 10. So this arrangement here clearly shows 10 plus 5 or 15 made up of three fives. So you could easily talk to your students about why it is that we get 10, then we get 15, then we get 20, then we get 25 and so on. An alternative way of looking at it, here's another one, is to look at multiples of 10. So over here we have an example which is three columns, three sets of 10. And of course students all know that that equals 30 um, because that's what three tens are. If we were to remove half of them because this is 5 and say well this is 3 times 5 and so is that, how many counters do we have here? Well, if we divide that by 2, we'll obviously have 15. So another neat way of helping students remember their 5 times number facts is to say, well, what would that number multiplied by 10 be? So if you had 8 fives, what's 8 tens and then what's half of 80? And that makes 40. So there are some ideas. I hope this has uh, helped you. I wish you well with the worksheets and I look forward to talking with you again.